Today, as we continue in our series of messages, uh, considering how we put Jesus Christ first in our lives, uh, this week we want to consider the future. Uh, how do we keep Christ first in our lives in such a way that as we consider the future, that we move forward with genuine concern, trusting in Jesus for all things, and avoid falling into worry. And so the question before us this morning is the future, as you consider it, are you concerned in a good way or are you worried? Now certain events, certain circumstances will stir up our hearts and our minds uh, about the future and tempt us to fall into the sin of worry. And these things happen to all of us. Many of these things we're very familiar with. And today as we deal as a country uh, with the COVID-19, the virus, uh, it impacts our hearts and minds as we think about the future. Uh, consider the normal concerns that we have uh, on a regular basis, uh, such as we think about the future normal concerns that we have. We are concerned about family, relationships, uh, what parent hasn't thought, you know, if I die, if God takes me home, who will take care of my children? Or what spouse isn't concerned about their uh, loved one if they pass on in the future? Uh, these types of concerns readily come to our minds as we are concerned about family and friends moving into the future. We normally think about money, jobs, and work. Uh, these things we cannot escape in life. We must deal with them. And sometimes as we look to the future, uh, it can cause us to not only be concerned, but we become worried about them. Politics, government, uh, as you look to the future, uh, certainly, many of us are concerned about what is taking place, and if we're not careful, we can become worried about politics and government uh, as it relates to what's going to happen in the future. Uh, as you look into the future, one's safety, uh, one's well-being uh, is certainly often a concern. Or getting old and our health, as we look to the future, uh, we can readily become concerned about our health because of circumstances and events and the event of, uh, natural event of getting old. Or dying and eternity, you know, we look to the future, the thought of death can cause us to be concerned. And if we're not careful, uh, we can uh, become sinfully worried. And so as you think about the future, what should we do as the followers of Christ as it relates to putting Jesus Christ first, being concerned about the future, but not falling into sinful worry? Well, one of the first things to do is know the reality of what you are dealing with. And let me emphasize very clearly at the beginning God doesn't say dismiss your thoughts about the future and live without them in life. Uh, there are many passages of Scripture that talk about being wise in our planning. There are many Scriptures that talk about this is going to happen in your future. Uh, there is a normal concern for future events and what is going to happen in life that God expects from us. But there's also that uh, point where we move from normal concern and handling things the way we should, trusting in Christ, to then uh, beginning to worry about it and begin to sin. And it's interesting that something like the COVID-19, the virus, the restrictions, uh, stirs up our concern about the future. You think about the normal areas of concern and think about how this virus, the impact of it, the potential of it, uh, stirs up our hearts and minds about the future. More concern about the family and loved ones. 
more concerned about work and employment and money, more, con more concerned about the politics of the day in relationship to it and because of it, more concerned about our safety as we move into the future, more concerned about our health because of what is taking place, more concerned about dying and eternity, all because of what's been taking place around us. And so it is normal to have these concerns. And there are certain events and circumstances in our lives, not only with this virus, but as we move into the future, certain things will stir our hearts and minds to be concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow. And so that is normal, and we need to recognize that. But we also need to recognize that there's a battle of faith that's taking place as we look into the future. As our hearts and minds normally, regularly think about what's going to happen into the future, there's a battle of faith that then takes place. And God wants you to know, again, that there's normal concern, legitimate concern, normal planning, uh, normal actions as we look to the future. But he also wants us to know there's a line that if we cross over it in our hearts and minds, we become worried, and that's the line that when we cross over, God says that that's sin. And so there's this battle of faith that's taking place in our hearts and minds as we move into the future, as we put Christ first, put our faith in God, versus I stop trusting in Him, I stop putting Christ first, and then I become worried. And so there's that battle of faith that's taking place. So we need to know that and understand it. And it's also helpful to understand the biblical definition of worry. And if you take that word, what it's saying to us, it's addressing two areas that come together. Uh, there's the action aspect of it, and there's the effect aspect of that word. So when the Bible talks about worry, when Jesus says not to worry about tomorrow, what that is saying is this. The action part is this. The word means to divide or tear something apart. And so when we are sinfully worried, our thoughts, our emotions, our heart and mind are being torn apart because of what we are thinking and what we are dwelling upon. And God calls that worry. The effect part of it is this. The tearing apart leads to moving away from what I should be doing and what I should be believing, that's the faith part, uh, about God and what God would have me to do. So when the Bible speaks about worry, and when the Bible says, do not worry, what it's saying is be aware that worry will tear apart your thinking and your emotions, and it will lead you away from faith. It will lead you away from Jesus Christ into thoughts and actions that do not reflect faith. So when you think about worry, we want to know the reality of what we're dealing with. It's normal to be concerned about the future. You will be concerned the rest of your life. Certain things will stir the concern up. There's the battle of faith that's constantly taking place. And we need to be on guard that we don't cross over that line where our hearts and minds become torn apart and we start to move away from what God would have us to think and do and believe. Also, it's important not only to know the reality of what we're dealing with, but to know when we are crossing the line. And with this, the identifying of the concern, you have to be on guard. You have to be willing to counsel yourself. You have to be looking at what am I thinking? What am I doing? And am I crossing over a line where God will not be pleased with me because of my thoughts and because of my actions? And so we have to identify the concern versus worry. 
And so each one of us uh, realizes we're all susceptible to this sin. We're all susceptible to crossing over that line because of our view of the future. And it's very important that we recognize that God says that is sin. That if we cross over that line, stop trusting Him, start letting those concerns become worry, where we are now no longer serving Him in the way that we should, living by faith the way that we should, then we have entered into sin. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 tells us, Do not be anxious or do not be worried about anything. There is nothing in this world, now or in the future, that should cause a follower of Jesus Christ to enter into worry. Why? Well, it's again because of our great God, our great Savior, Jesus Christ, and who we have in Christ that enables us to have that victory. But we need to be willing and ready to be on guard for that to take place. And some of the signs that we're crossing over into worry uh, are found in the examples in Scripture that are given to us. Remember when Jesus was meeting with his disciples as he was preparing them uh, to leave this world, to die on the cross, uh, to go to be with the Father in heaven and to build a place for them? As he looked at these men's lives, as he knew them uh, as, as God, as Christ, he said to them, let not your hearts be troubled. What was he saying? Don't worry. Don't let your hearts be torn apart, leading to actions and thoughts that are contrary to faith in Christ and in God. And so he mentioned to them, uh, do not be worried. Don't let your hearts be torn apart. When he dealt with Martha, remember Mary and Martha in the book of Luke, as they were preparing for Christ to come and many other people to come to their home and to prepare a dinner, Mary would sit at the feet of Jesus and take in the spiritual teaching. Martha was busy doing other things, and you remember what Jesus said to her. He said to Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things. There's an example that was left for us of here's crossing over the line. So what were the particulars that you could see in the disciples' lives and the life of Martha that are there for our example? We are to look at these men and see the impact of the concern that was turning into worry. We are to look at Martha's life and recognize they're just like you and I. Uh, we can do the same thing easily. Well, with the men, the disciples, they were losing hope. Uh, they, they thought the world was coming to an end because of the future events that were being spoken of. They were losing hope. They were stopping their f actions, the function of their lives, were reaching a point where they were not doing what Christ would have them to do because of their worry, their concerns that were troubling their hearts. They were neglecting relationships. As you see, the accounts move forward. They separated from Jesus. They separated from one another temporarily. Uh, all because of what was taking place and their concerns and that was now worry about the future. Their thoughts were unproductive. They were not centered around, this is what Jesus said, this is what he said we should do. And now they had fallen apart in their, their thinking. Their emotions were out of control. Uh, they were beyond the normal emotions that we have and enjoy. Now they were causing them to be distraught because of their concern that turned to worry about the future. And any time you find yourself thinking about your circumstances and the future, and you're losing hope, you're stopping what you should be doing that day, if you're neglecting relationships, beginning with Christ to all those people around you, 
if your thoughts are unproductive, if you find your emotions are out of control, those are signs, indicators, that I'm crossing over from normal concern into the sin of worry. And then you look at the life of Martha. What do we learn from her example? Well, Martha, Jesus said to her, you're worried and you're troubled about many things. And we might look at Martha and say, well, she was doing a lot that day. She was serving Jesus. She was serving those people in her home. She had a lot on her plate. But Jesus knew that in her heart and in her thinking, she was worried. She was concerned about the future. It might have been the future of that day, but she was concerned to the point where she is called out by Christ for doing something uh, in her heart and mind that needed to change. And what was Martha's issue? Well, the lesson from that is this. When the earthly things of this life take precedence over spiritual things in relationship to the future, then we have crossed over that line from concern to worry. And so Martha is running around preparing that uh, dinner, preparing for those guests, and she is now emphasizing the temporal things of life and forgetting those things that are more important, the spiritual, the eternal things. And God says to her, Christ says to her, you're worried about many things. So if you find yourself looking to the future, looking to tomorrow, and your concern is so wrapped up in the things of this earth, earthly things, and you're forgetting spiritual things, then your heart is going to be torn apart and your thoughts are going to lead you to worry. So there are signs that we need to be aware of in our lives uh, that indicate to us, slow down, be careful, you're about to cross over that line, normal concern, okay, trusting in God, that's where you want to be, but don't cross over that line where God calls it sin. So we need to be on guard for worry. Uh, this is what God tells us to do. Know when we're crossing that line. But like many other things in Christian living, there's not only the aspect, the part where God says, don't do this, you know, stop doing this, or this is a sin, so you do not do this uh, thing in your life. But there's always that part that you do instead. Christian living can be characterized, summarized in the fact that we put off certain things and we, we replace those certain things with what God would have us to do. So when it comes to concern or when I find myself coming close to that line where I'm about to fall apart and start worrying, when I'm starting to lose the battle of faith, God says, don't go there. But he also says, in its place, this is what you should be doing. This is what you need to be putting on on a regular basis to keep us from sinful worry. So I want to share with you five different truths from the Word of God that he gives to us to keep us from sinful worry. And when you see this package of verses and truth from God, uh, hopefully... It will strengthen your faith. It will cause you to look at the future and say, I, I, I trust God. I love God. I know that he's in control, and I have nothing to worry about. I'll take care of my business uh, in the light of who God is, and I'll be concerned, but I'm not going to fall into sinful worry. So five different things. Uh, number one, as you look to find where your faith is strengthened, Faith is strengthened at the throne of grace. Prayer keeps you from worry. The epitome of prayer, the purpose of prayer, is to align our heart with God's will. So when I am coming to God in prayer, I am not coming to Him to say, this is what I want in life, here's how I've planned it out, this is what I'm demanding from you. Instead, when we look at prayer, we are coming to God in faith and we are saying, I am needy 
and you are the answer to all of my needs, and I want my will to align with your will. And so when you look at the throne of grace and prayer, we are told in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. You know, what's, what is God's word saying? You come to, to God through Christ, you come to the throne of grace. Grace is what we need for what? All things, including facing the future. God, give me your grace for tomorrow. God, give me your grace for my thoughts and concerns about my future. And he says that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You know, we look to the future and we see our needs and concerns that are normal, but we should be praying about them every single day. Lord, I'm giving my concerns to you. Lord, I don't know where tomorrow is leading me. These are the things that are in my heart, on my mind, but I'm giving them to you. I'm coming to that throne of grace because I need your mercy. I need your power to be at work in this area of my life. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything... By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, look what that is telling us. God is saying that as you deal with life, as you have the normal concerns about the future, do not be anxious, don't worry. But instead, you come and you give me your cares and your concerns. You pray, you, you submit them to God, and what does he say he will do? It's a spiritual work of God within our hearts, within our minds, to give us peace. Peace that passes all understanding. And it will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Now, the guarding aspect is it's keeping us from sin. It's keeping us from worry. It's keeping us from crossing over that line when we pray and present, here are my concerns about the future. God, I'm giving them to you because I know that you're in control. Now, as you think about facing the future, as you think about the normal concerns that we all have, that these are the things that should draw us to the throne of grace every single day, every single moment in our hearts when we find that the concerns are taking us close to that line, that's the time to pray. And what a wonderful gift we have uh, through Christ and in Christ of this gift of pray. So you want to pray and pray some more because that's where your strength is. Uh, is your faith is strengthened. Number two, the nature of God strengthens our faith as well. And what that means simply is this. When you are thinking upon who God is, when you are meditating upon God's Word, which reveals the truth about who He is, when we're thinking about who God is, then our faith will be strengthened as we look to the future, there are so many verses that we could read and use, probably the, the Bible as a whole, to say, here's who your God is. Why are we concerned to the point of worry when we look at the future? But I want to share with you just a, a one passage in Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And think about what this one small part of the Bible is saying to you about who your God is. And if you're living with that truth being uh, brought forth in your heart and mind, thinking upon who God is, you're not going to be concerned to the point of worry about the future. Uh, listen to Isaiah. He says, have you not known? He raises that question. In other words, you know these things. Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
You've heard these things before about God. And isn't it interesting that we might know all the truth about who God is, and yet we still get to these points in life where we move away from those thoughts about God that open the door to worry. He says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, if you think about looking into the future, and if you ever look into the future or even tomorrow causes you to feel helpless, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm very concerned about these different areas in, in life. Guess what God says to do? Don't look forward without remembering who He is. And when you look at just this one passage of Scripture, it should lead every single follower of Christ to say, as I look to the future, my strength, my hope, it rests in the Lord. It rests in the greatness of who God is and what He has revealed to me about Himself and what He has in control related to my life and the future. You know, here it just tells us He's the everlasting God. He's the one without a beginning and an end, the eternal, infinite God. Is He in control of that future? You bet He is. Every single aspect of it comes under His sovereign control. And when you think of the sovereignty of God and the eternal, eternality of God, His control of the future, it's not God in the heavens looking down and saying, well, that's unwinding in an interesting way. I might want to intervene and help them. Now, the Bible says our God is such a great God that He has planned all things, and all things work together for good. That's our God. That's the truth that enables us not to worry about the future. It says He's the creator of all things. He's created all that exists, and He's created a plan for everything He has created. It all falls under His sovereign plan and creation for everything that exists, including our lives and what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It tells us here he never grows weary or tired. God is always on top of what's happening in your life. He never leaves you, never forsakes you, never forgets you, knows more about us than any other person, including ourselves, and he never grows weary and tired in taking care of our future, every aspect of our lives. And his ways are perfect. Haven't we known that? God has shared that with us, that everything has a plan and a purpose for what he's doing with history, what he's doing with his creation. And it says here, he gives power to the weak. When we reach those points where we are tempted to worry, when we feel everything is helpless, it is our God who strengthens us. It is our God who delights in giving us the faith to continue to move forward. And it's based upon the nature of who He is. So we find our strength in the nature of who God is. We find it in prayer. Number three, the focus on the promises of God strengthen us as well. Now we know that if God makes a promise to us, will He keep that promise? Well, I think every single one of us would answer, well, uh, certainly he does. God always keeps his promises. He can never fail. He can't go back on his word. Again, based upon the nature of who God is, he will always honor his promises. So when it comes to the future and concern that comes leading us to worry, if we're trusting in the promises of God, what happens to the worry? 
well, the worry goes away. Our faith is strengthened. But we must remember God always honors his promises. And he's given us the promises in his word to help us with daily living and to help us with looking to the future. And we take just one of those promises and apply it to the future. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, God makes this promise to us. He says, No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Uh, in other words, he says, whenever there are trials, whenever there are things that stir up our hearts and minds about the future, guess what? You're not the first person to go down that road. You're not the first one to experience that uh, in life. You think of the uh, virus that has frightened our nation, caused so many people to be worried about tomorrow and the future. Guess what? There's been other times in history where these things, types of things have occurred. And what's the Bible said? Well, you're not the first one to go through that. Well, why is that important? Well, because God has seen through other people, other believers. He will see you through whatever the trial, whatever the temptation that is there to cause you to worry about the future. The verse goes on, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be attempted beyond what you are able. In other words, whatever situation you find yourself in that's causing you to think uh, in such a way that you're worrying about the future, God says what? He's not going to leave you there. He's not put you there and then said, well, you're on your own. You better worry. No, the Bible says what? Others have gone through it. God has met their needs. Whatever you're going through right now, God promises that there's a plan and a purpose in that trial, and he's going to help you through it. And he says, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There's a way out of whatever this temptation, the trial is in your life. You know, a lot of times at this point we ask the question, well, when? You know, if it was up to us, all of this COVID-19 stuff would be over today. It'd be over with. When you're in the midst of a trial, you are always thinking, when is this going to be over? I want it done. God, can you get this out of my life? Well, here's the promise of God that he says there's a plan and a purpose in it. I'm seeing you through. I'm never going to leave you or put you in a situation where you have to handle it on your own. But the timing of it, he says, there's a way of escape. There's a time when it will be behind us. And it might be tomorrow. It might be months from now. It might be years from now. And guess what? It might be in eternity when it's over. But it will be over. And it will have the purposes of God. And so to focus on promises like this one, these are the things that will strengthen our faith. And the Bible is filled with the promises of God that relate to future thinking. And we need to be focused on them. Uh, another area of strength is found in the heart that is set on eternal things. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. When we find ourselves focused on temporal, earthly things, and we are forgetting the eternal, spiritual things, we are opening the door for our hearts to become torn apart. We're opening the door for our minds to wander into worry because we've lost track of what Christ is doing in our lives in making our purpose for living spiritual, making our purpose for living eternal in its thinking and thoughts and goals. So yes, once again, concern for the future that's legitimate, dealing with earthly things, we must do that, and there's a way to do it that honors God. But if they become the emphasis, and we forget that we are here to live for the glory of Christ, if we forget that we are here to live for eternal things and not the temporal things of this world, then we're thinking like the world 
and our hearts and minds will be torn apart and we will begin to sin and worry. Now, if you need evidence of it, just look at the world around us today in relationship to what's going on with this virus. Are people worried about the future because of it? They are. Uh, to the point where many are making decisions and doing things that are uh, obviously not in the best interest of themselves or others. Uh, they can't sleep. They can't uh, handle the thoughts of, of the money and relationships and everything that's going to possibly be affected uh, by these things. Well, the believer, we should not be thinking in that way. Normal concern? Yes. Being smart about it? Yes. But focusing on Christ and living for his glory will keep us from crossing over that line and then becoming sinfully worried. Are you living for eternity? Are you living for spiritual things? Keep doing that every single day of your life, no matter what concerns you have about the future. God said this is what he desires for you, this is what he'll help you to do, and it will keep you from sinful worry. And then the pursuit of glorifying Christ strengthens your faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God saves us for the purpose of living for Jesus Christ for the purpose of serving in his church, for the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we're going to be steadfast and immovable, the person who is worried about the future does not reflect that steadfastness and that uh, inability to be moved. The person who's worried is going to be someone you cannot count on for serving Christ, for living for the glory of Christ. So we need to be focused upon whether we eat or drink or whether we think about the future. We do so in such a way that we aim to glorify Christ. And if you're aiming to glorify Christ with your thoughts about the future, your plans about the future, God's going to strengthen you. God's going to give you the victory that, in that battle of faith, and you will not find yourself worried. So as we think about the future. Are you concerned or are you worried? Putting Christ first, we should have concern about the future, but we shouldn't be worried. And as you think about these thoughts today, I trust for the followers of Christ that you know the reality of what you're dealing with. We're all tempted to worry. We all need to be on guard about crossing that line. And we need to know when we are crossing that line. Be honest with yourself. Uh, look at the example of the disciples and Martha and how Christ gave them the victory in those areas. But be aware, these are the things that, for me, cause my heart and mind to, to worry. Lord, when I'm coming to that point, help me to immediately go to those points of being strengthened and to know those. You know, Number one, pray. Go to the throne of grace. Number two, remember who your God is. The greatness of God uh, will help you to be strengthened for the future. Trust in the promises of God concerning the future. Again, that's where your strength will be uh, found. The faith will be found to have the victory. Keep your heart set on eternal things. Lord, help me to set my affection, my thoughts, my goals upon those things that matter for eternity, and then take every day to live for the glory of Christ. And when you are doing those things, you're going to find your heart will not be torn apart, your emotions will be functioning well and in a good way, your thoughts will not lead you into sinful worry, but they'll be focused upon God and the things of God. This is what God tells us He will do. And so as we put Christ first, I trust that as you think about the future, you're not worried, concerned, dealing with it, 
but you're showing forth Jesus Christ and the difference that he makes in our lives to those who are without Christ. Those without Christ, as they deal with the issues of the day, uh, they're in a panic. They don't have that peace that passes all understanding about tomorrow, about the future, not even for today. We have that with Jesus Christ, and we praise God for it. And would also say, if, that, if you have never received Christ as your Savior, then it is impossible for you to not be worried about the future. Not only the future of this world, but the future of eternity. And our heart's desire for, for you would be that you would see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the answer to your sin, and also the answer to your worry, that sin of worry. Because to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, to receive him as your Savior from your sin, the Lord of your life, to have that hope of eternity and the promises of God for tomorrow, uh, there's no value that can be put on it. It is a wonderful gift from God, and it can be yours if you will hear the gospel message and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for the peace that passes all understanding that is found in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I pray for every follower of Christ uh, that you would cause our hearts uh, not to be troubled, that you would look into our hearts and minds and you would see that we are not worried about the things of this earth, but that we are coming to you, casting all our cares upon you that we are trusting in who you are, we are trusting in the promises of God that you have given to us, and we are looking to serve you, to live for eternal things, and glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in all that we say and do. Lord, we pray for the strength, for the faith, to move forward, no matter what you have planned for us in the future. And Lord, may it speak about Jesus Christ to those who are without. And Lord, we would also pray that for anyone without Christ as their Savior, as they deal with worry in their life, may they see it for what it is. You know, God calls it sin, but may they see that the answer to it is found in the cross, it's found in Jesus Christ, and we ask this in his name, amen.